Hey, good morning, Impact. It's Pastor Matt. I am actually, you'll notice I'm inside. I'm not at the church. Uh, it has been an absolute blazing couple of days. It is so incredibly hot. I'm trying to stay cool in my house right now, and I hope you guys are trying to stay cool as well. I've got a few announcements, and then we're going to jump right in. First and foremost, uh, number one, I miss you so much. I can't wait to see you guys. Uh, that's really always my first announcement because I miss you guys so much. Hannah and I, we are praying for you, our impact team. We are praying for you guys as well. And we can't wait to be able to meet once again, once again together. Second announcement, real quick, is Zoom. If you aren't joining us on Zoom, hey, join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We would love to see your face. This last Wednesday was crazy. There were so many people on. I loved it, every bit of it. But if you guys aren't a part of Zoom, hey, my email's right here. Uh, just go ahead and shoot me an email. I'll get you guys the Zoom link. I would love to be able to connect with you as well as our Impact team uh, and leaders. We love to see you guys on Wednesdays. Can't wait to see you this Wednesday as well. All right, y'all. Hey, we're just going to dive right into this message. I know if you guys were part of our Zoom call on Wednesday, you uh, got a little bit of an introduction to what we're going to be starting with. We are going to be looking at three seasons of Joseph's life. If you don't know who Joseph, Joseph is, you can go ahead and jump into the book of Genesis chapter 37 to go throughout his story. We're going to be looking at those three, those three seasons of his life. Number one was the pit. Number two was the prison. Number three was the the palace. I'm going to dive into our into our scripture uh, in just a, a quick second, but I want to just give you guys a little bit here in terms of why we're talking about Joseph is because in these different seasons of his life, Joseph was consistent. And I can tell you one thing, man, when your faith is consistent, you begin to see the things that God is really laying out for you. When you stay strong and you continue to put one foot in front of the other, and you continue to hear God's voice and you continue to move and operate in the dream that he has put inside your heart, you will see the fruit of that. That's why we're taking a look at Joseph. I'm going to dive into his word right now. All right, hey, if you guys are taking notes, write this down for me. Genesis chapter 37, and we're going to read through verses 2 through 11 as we begin looking at this first season of Joseph's life. If you hear some snoring, by the way, I promise it's just my dog. Uh, I, you know, one of the, the hazards of having a French bulldog is that he makes lots of noises, and it is really hot, and he is struggling. So that's what he's doing right now, if you happen to hear that throughout the video. But we're going to take a look. Genesis chapter 37, verses 2 through 11. I'm going to read it real quick. It says, when Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half-brothers, but Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Jacob, his father, loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph. It was a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when, when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundles stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. His, this time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that, he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. I'm going to give you a handful of observa observations as we go through this. And the first one that I want you to write down, the first one that comes to my mind is this. A dream that can't be tested is a dream that can't be trusted. Yes, a dream that can't be tested is a dream that can't be trusted. I've realized this is when God puts things into my heart, when he gives me big dreams and big visions, man, it, there's going to be some testing that comes on. There's going to be some, some naysayers, some people. There's going to be some trials in which I have to learn how to continuously walk in that. You see Joseph as he goes and he tells his brothers and he tells his brothers and his father about this dream. And they're like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Uh, how am I going to bow to you, my little brother or his father, my son? Are you kidding me? And this is one thing that God does. 
is as we walk throughout our life, there's going to be things that come and they try and tamper with. They try and test those dreams that God has put into your life. So I want you guys to hear this. Write it down. A dream that can't be tested is a dream that can't be trusted. You know, I took photography when I was in high school. And I, I went in and, and they taught me how to do all these things. And it was old school photography. It wasn't like take a picture with your iPhone or your Android like it is now. It was actually, we actually had to make these cameras uh, at one point. And it was crazy. We did it out of a shoebox. But I remember going in and we had to learn how to develop these pictures and go into this dark room and there's a solution. Then you had to hang it up. And I remember going and I put it all in there. I did everything best I could. And I came out, my picture stunk. It was terrible. And I went and I asked my teacher, I said, man, what in the world? He said, man, you have to let it develop. You have to let it process. And that's what I think right here as we look at Joseph's story. Man, Joseph was letting things develop. A dream that can't be tested is a dream that can't be trusted. When God puts something into your heart, when there's a plan, a purpose, a vision over your life, understand there's going to be naysayers. There's going to be people that come. Trust the process and continue walking just like Joseph did. All right, I'm just going to roll into the second observation that I was making as I was reading through this. And that is this. If you're taking notes, write this down. The dream that God gives us for the future has to endure the tests of today. It has to endure the tests of today. Listen, Joseph, he re his family rejected his dreams. It was it, it was this thing where, man, his dad, his, his brothers, they said, what in the world? But listen, God laid out a final destination for Joseph. He gave him this grand dream and he, he told him, hey, man, this is the final destination. But he didn't give Joseph the journey. He didn't say, Joseph, this is what you're going to deal with each and every day. Joseph, this is what your friends and family might think about you. He didn't do that. He just gave Joseph these God dreams, these amazing dreams. He gave him the destination, but he didn't tell him anything about the journey. And that's part of being a Christ follower is again, Joseph was, was stepping forward continuously throughout the story in Genesis chapter 37. And that's what we're called to do as well. See, Joseph's family rejected his dreams. And a major characteristic of a dreamer is that your dream will threaten some people and there will always be naysayers. Listen, your dream for the future will be tested today. The dream for the future that God gives you, there's going to be testing today. All right, I'm going to continue on reading Genesis chapter 37, 12 through 36 is where we're going to be reading right now. It says, soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, your brothers are pasturing the sheep. Get ready and I will send you to them. I'm ready to go, Joseph replied. Go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him on his way and Joseph traveled from, from their home in the valley of Hebron. When Joseph's brothers came, saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns. Into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why would we shed, shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the pit. Now the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Now, before we go any further, you got to think, these brothers are terrible brothers. Man, that's got to be awful. But put yourself in their shoes. If your little sibling came to you and said, you know what? I've got these dreams that you're going to bow down to me. And that you're going to serve me. And that's just the way it's going to be. It might 
it would probably rub me the wrong way too. I don't know if I would go into uh, the realm that they went to, but I can kind of understand their frustration. That's going to bring me to my third observation. And that third observation is this rejection can be direction. Rejection can be direction. See, I've learned this. Man can rob you of your coat, but no one can rob you of your calling. Still, that coat, it was a sign of God's favor on him, a physical expression of the God dream in his spirit, and it was ripped from him as if it had never existed. His brothers stripped it of him. That representation of that God dream was taken. Listen, I need you to hear this. Man can rob you of your position, but not what you were called to do. Yes, man can take a title from you. Man can make things hard on you, but they can never rob what you were called to do. They can't take the calling that God has placed upon your life. See, part of our job as Christians, it's to go before the Lord and it's to see rejection and to understand that sometimes, man, it's God's plan for direction. Sometimes when we see that that, that rejection, it's God protecting us. Other times, man, that rejection, it, it's for us to go through it and to persevere and it's a trial it's a test but we as Christ followers we need to understand that we need to go before the Lord and understand the difference we need to follow him and be consistent in our time with him in our conversation with him we need to continue moving forward and seeking out because because all of these things I'm telling you that rejection it can be direction we just as Christ followers have to figure out the direction that God is pulling us from that rejection now I hope you go back and you read the story of Joseph because there's a lot that happens and we're again talking about the season between the pit the prison and the palace well if you go to Genesis chapter 50 there's a passage here that'll give you a little hint of what happens but it says this you intended to harm me but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. And here's what I have for you real quick. My last observation is this. What God does in you, he will finish through you. What God does in you, he will finish through you. Philippians 1, 6 says, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. See, you can't finish what God has started you have to trust Jesus to be the one who he is, who we know he is. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Listen, it couldn't have been easy for Joseph having a dream from God about leading and being a person of, of influence, a person that's going to matter and make uh, uh, amazing decisions that are going to help and benefit so many. And then winding up in the pit. His brother stripped him and put him in a pit. Listen, some of us, we worry though about even before we get to the pit. When God puts a dream in us, we worry if there's a pit on the other side of the road. We worry, what if what if we get past that pit? What's next? What's, what's going to come on? We don't care to dream because we're worried that there might be a letdown or, or a stumbling block or, a, a, or, or something that hinders us from getting there right away. Even, even that we might never reach that dream that God gave us. But hear me out. Joseph had three important seasons. The pit, the, the prison, and the palace. What I'm grateful for and one of the biggest takeaways for me through this is stay faithful. Stay faithful. When God gives you a dream, stick to it. Stick to the dream. Keep moving forward and trusting him. You remain faithful. You remain optimistic. You remain in his presence. And then you hold on to what he's given you, even in the pit. No matter what season it is, no matter how bleak it is, stay faithful. It's called faith. Knowing the one who will finish what he started impact. I love you. I hope you have big dreams. I hope you stay close to the Lord. I hope he's speaking to you. I hope you hold on to it. And, and more than anything, I hope you stay faithful, just like Joseph did in these three incredible seasons of his life. I love you guys so much. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get out of here. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you that we're still able to do this. God, I thank you that we, we are able to learn from your word, that it is that it is holy and that it is living word of God. Father, we just ask that you would continue to speak through us throughout this, the rest of this series. Again, we thank you for the faithfulness of Joseph, Lord. Even in the pit, he held on to the dream in which you gave to him, Father God. Lord, I thank you uh, for our impact crew, for our students, for our leaders, uh, for our church. Father God, I, I ask that you would just continue to bless us and guide us throughout this time, Father. Lord, I love you. It's in Jesus' name. If you agree, would you say amen? Amen. I love you. Pastor Matt, out.